So today we're talking about the best settings in Vanguard for controller players and console players in general. So we're talking Xbox players, PlayStation players, although PC players will get a little bit from this video as well. So we'll start with stick sensitivity. This is kind of up to you for the most part, but generally you want something between 5 and 8, depending on your FOV and experience on the game. For the vehicle sensitivity multipliers, leave these at 1. There isn't too much you need to finesse in this regard. For your ADS sensitivity multiplier, we want to go down to custom sensitivity per zoom. Now this is new to Vanguard and we get to change it for each magnification. So the lower zooms, so that's basically iron sights, times two and times three optics, I've actually left mine at one. As whilst you're aiming down sights, you still want to be able to move around the screen pretty quickly and lock onto enemies. Whereas at the higher zoom optics, we're talking four, upwards, all the way past eight and higher zooms. So most of the time, this is going to be snipers. I've gone for 0.9, so slightly slower, just to have that little bit more control when aiming down sights. Now, if you're going for crazy trick shots with a sniper, obviously you want your standard sensitivity and ADS sensitivity to be way higher than this. But for most people, most of the time, this is going to be good for you. For your button layout preset, this is very much up to you and I have made plenty of videos on this in the past. I currently use stick and move, I'm on a standard controller and basically this means my right analog is the jump button. I know many people use tactical so the right analog clicked in is now the crouch button so you can drop shot much easier and I know more and more people are starting to use the bumper jumper so you actually use the bumpers to jump. Like I say, this is very much up to you, but basically you don't really want to be using standard as you want to be able to jump shot and drop shot easier. So these three choices are best, the bumper jumper, stick and move or tactical. For the vertical aims, you want to leave all these on standard. Now aim response curve uh, is kind of tricky. There's standard, linear and dynamic. Again, I've made videos like this on the past, and Vanguard will be using the same system as other Call of Duties. So if you want to know about this setting a little bit more in depth, you can check out one of those videos, which I'll link down in the description. But just very quickly, I'll tell you what these are about. So basically, the aim response curve type refers to how much you move your stick in the first phase of movement, and then the latter stage of movement relative to what you see on screen. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, I'm on dynamic here. So that means when I move my stick in the first instance, Instance, it's going to have a lot of movement on screen before slowing down. So that's very good for close range combat and using an SMG and things like that. Whereas standard is kind of the opposite. When you move your stick, initially your on screen movement will be slightly slower before speeding up. So this is great for assault rifle battles and things like that. And lastly, linear is just a direct response to the amount you move your sticks. There's no artificial algorithms overriding your movement or anything like that. So it is a personal choice, but I use dynamic because I plan to throw myself in the action quite a lot on Vanguard Multiplier. Control vibration I turn off just for less distractions. Weapon fire threshold is actually a new setting to Vanguard and I've just turned it straight off. I think it'll be a great feature to turn on if you want like a realistic experience. So basically when this setting is turned on, your button or trigger if you're on a controller will respond and simulate a gun's trigger. So you'll have different thresholds to when you press it to how the gun fires. So that'll be really cool and realistic, but if we're just trying to get on top, we really want to turn this off and we want the same reaction every time regardless of the weapon used. For ADS sensitivity transition timing, again this is a new setting, I've put mine on gradual, which basically means the sensitivity multiplier that we've sorted above is progressively applied when alternating between hip fire and fully zoomed in. So imagine you're running down a corridor and someone else is running towards you. You're both going to transition from hip firing to aiming in and hopefully kill your target. Now if there's multiple enemies or your one enemy is moving around a lot, you want to be able to move around as quickly as possible with your aim. Well if your sensitivity multiplier instantly kicks in as you start aiming down sights, that's actually going to slow down your aim when you're trying to aim left to right. Whereas gradual gives you a nice balance between speed and a little bit of control. The after zoom setting I find is a little bit too slow to kick in and is a little bit more erratic. A lot of these are the settings on this page we want to just leave as standard until we get to a dead zone. So you want to put these trigger input dead zones to zero. And this is simply because as soon as we press that trigger even a little bit, we want it to respond on screen, giving us the fastest reactions possible. And I think a lot of people are going to miss out on this. So if you put this down to zero, you're going to have just a tiny millisecond advantage over other players. 
And then when we get to stick dead zone, basically this is referring to stick drift. You want this setting on the lowest it will go without your analog sticks drifting and your aim just drifting around the screen. So what I would do if I was you, put it on something really low like zero or one, go into a game, aim around, stand still, and then see if your aim drags across the screen. If it does, turn it up one, and then try again, and then keep trying until it's the lowest possible without dragging around. Then the max dead zone really doesn't matter here. Now onto gameplay with our aim assist, we absolutely want that on to give us every little bit of help we can get. At the moment, I've got it on default. I haven't tested it out fully, but default should be just fine. That's basically the same as Warzone. ADS aim assist, again, we want that on. A lot of these other settings, we just want to leave as standard. We don't want to confuse it too much. Automatic sprint, we absolutely want on. Particularly tax sprint, this is going to give us the best movement to try and get out of sticky situations. And if you do put on that automatic tactical sprint, remember to turn off sprint cancels reload. Otherwise, you're just going to constantly be cancelling your reload and it's going to be a nightmare. Sprinting door bash, that's very much up to you. I like to make an entrance, so I leave that on. Slide behavior, we want it on tap because once again, slide cancelling is going to be a big part of this Call of Duty. And again, the rest of these settings are fine on the standard, but for the interact and reload behavior, this is very much up to you. So basically, do you want to tap to reload or do you want to tap to interact? So if we want to use tap to reload, we would then have to hold our button to interact with things around the map and then vice versa for tap to interact setting. I've gone tap to interact and then hold my button to reload as that's what I use on Warzone with automatic tax sprint and the tap to interact setting. For graphics, I'm not going to go into these too much, but we want our brightness turned up just a little bit to make sure we can see things. If you follow Call of Duty's advice, you're going to get the most realistic game, but if you want those little advantages of seeing people a bit easier, turn it up to something between 55 and 65. For the color customization and filters, I haven't played around too much yet. The standard color palette seems just fine to me right now, but maybe when it gets integrated with Warzone, we might need a change up. For field of view, this is kind of a personal choice. Generally though, to get a good advantage, you want something over 100. Some people go all the way up to 120, but then the things at a distance can be kind of hard to see. It's kind of personal preference. For camera movements, put it on as low as it can go, so this is 50%. This ensures that there's less shaking on the screen, so hopefully you can just see people easier. For world motion blur, same thing, turn it off, and weapon motion blur, turn off. It's just going to let you see things that little bit easier. Depth of field I've also turned off, so like it explains in the settings, if this is turned on, this simulates a camera lens, so anything out of focus looks a bit blurry. You, you really don't want that, you want to see as much as possible. For fidelity, Fidelity FX, I've turned this on. This makes everything on screen a little bit sharper. Then for on-demand texture streaming, we also want this on, just to ensure we have the best graphics possible. For audio, there's not too many settings on this one that will give you an advantage. Just basically choose the audio mix that suits whatever you use. So I've got headphones on because I use a headset. And then that's pretty much everything in the settings that are gonna give you an advantage in the game. Everything else is purely up to you and personal preference. I hope this video helps you out, I hope you're enjoying Vanguard, and bye for now.